Hi everybody, Patrick here from EngineeringShot.com, ElectronicLessons.com, and PaintballProps.com. This is project number 13 for our multi-project electronics learning board. We're going to change vibration into audio. So we're going to turn a vibration into something we can actually hear and hear well. <coughs> now, if you're familiar with our sensors block, you should have watched our sensors tutorial, which is listed below. All of our block tutorials are listed below, so have a look. In our sensors tutorial, we talk about uh, our vibration circuit, uh, our microphone circuit, our LDR circuit, etc. Uh, we have two sensor outputs, sense and AC. This is our AC output pin, uh, and it's it's we call it AC because it's AC coupled. On the left, here's the uh, 10k pull-up resistor. It is a protective resistor. Here's our vibration sensor. So when there's vibration right on the left side of this capacitor, we see essentially zero and five volts because this acts as a switch to ground. So what we want to do is we want to couple it. We want to rid the circuit of its DC component so that we get on this side and a little, a tiny, tiny voltage uh, variant uh, riding the zero volt line. So we've rid ourselves of the DC component. We've just got a little sine wave there based on the vibration. Uh, a little vibration will get a smaller signal. Uh, a bigger vibration will get a bigger signal. Uh, and what we're going to do is we're going to connect that to our audio amplifier. But first I'm going to talk about this pull-down resistor. This is essentially what's called a bleeder resistor. And when that's connected here, what this will do is act to bleed off any ambient noise on that line, any ambient power on that line. And uh, if we don't do that, then we'll have some mysterious behavior at the positive input of our audio amplifier. So on the board we'll connect our AC pin to our A1 plus pin, which is the input of our uh, first uh, operational amplifier, not inverting. Uh, before we actually do that, what we have to talk about is we have to actually have to select the vibrator. In order to select the vibrator, we have the option of selecting the, mic the microphone, the vibrator, or the uh, vibration circuit, rather, or the LDR. And on our sensor block, we have to short the two pins labeled VIB. We'll do that on the board in just a minute. So, our... our, our uh, our non-inverting operational amplifier. We have a fixed resistor for RA, our RF, our feedback resistor is a variable resistor labeled gain one on the board. It's 100K, so we can uh, adjust our, our uh, gain of our amplifier between one and 101. So we can multiply the input signal by a maximum of 101. So we're gonna connect our output to our, our A1 out, operational amplifier one output to our act pin, our actuator pin. And what we're going to do is we're going to, like the last project, I'm hoping you just finished uh, playing with the last project, which is our audio amplifier circuit, uh, because it explains how to connect the speaker to the board. The speaker peripheral has two pins. It's just a coil of wire, essentially. Uh, connect one to the 5 volt line, VCC, on, on the power supply pin block. Connect uh, this, uh, the other wire to the bottom rail of the actuator pin block. You want to make sure that the actuator pin block has no jumpers on it. Uh, on the actuator pin block we can select RLY, Relay, MTR for motor, and Buzz, B-U-Z-Z -Z for buzzer. We want to make sure that none of those are selected and that if this is the this is the pin block that none of them are shorted. All of these are connected internally so you want to connect right here the second pin to right here, either one of these. And that will make it so that when we feed the audio signal to this transistor driver, here's our 1K protective resistor, here's the base of the transistor, this is an NPN, power will be fed through the speaker, through the transistor to ground, uh, at a, an ample, uh, at, at, in, in, it will be basically signifying what the vibration sounds like. Um, because the transistor turns on and off with the audio signal that we've created with our amplifier. So this is basically it. We've got, we're isolating our signal right here. We're amplifying it. We're connecting it to our uh, speaker driver circuit. And so if we shake our, we shake our board, we shake it a little bit, we'll get a different sound. And if we shake it harder, and we'll, we'll actually be hearing different sounds of the speaker. As well, we can tune the gain using our gain one potentiometer to turn the volume up or volume down. So let's connect that to the board. The first thing we want to do is we want to select our vibrator. So, our vibration circuit, rather. The vibration circuit is right here. This is the sensor. And what we have to do is this is our sensor pin block. We have to select VIB. So, a two-pin jumper on the rightmost pins, letter labeled VIB. 
We've now selected our vibration sensor. Now we have to connect our uh, AC output that, and we're going to put, connect that to our A1 plus pin. That is the positive input of our non-inverting operational amplifier. Now we're going to connect the A1 out, the output of our first audio amplifier, to our ACT pin, our actuator pin. Now this is our actuator pin block, and I've taken the jumper off it, so all of the, the uh, pins are bare. The bottom three pins are connected internally, and that goes to our transistor driver. So now what you want to do is you want to take your speaker peripheral and connect it, connect one pin to the bottom rail, any one of them, and the other to the 5 volt line on the power supply pin block. So let's plug it in. Plugged in my board. Now as soon as you plug it in and you hit the vibrate, you start shaking the board, if you don't hear anything, unplug it. It means that something's wrong. Sometimes these wire connections aren't all that great. Anyway. Pretty neat, huh? Now we've been able to, to we've turned <coughs> our audio signal into, or our vibration into an audio signal. So we can adjust the gain to make it louder or softer. And really that's all there is to it. If you leave it be, it'll stop vibrating. I think it's pretty neat anyway. Now you can tell your friends and family that you've turned a vibration, a vibration into an audio signal. So you can fiddle with the gain of the amplifier to make this louder or quieter. Uh, or you can basically, by, by lowering the gain, you can make it so that it only really emits an audio signal when you have a, a, big, a big vibration. Anyhow, that's all there is for this video. Very simple, it's just a follow-up to our audio amplifier circuit. Hope you enjoyed it, and thanks for watching, guys.